the profile portrait of John F. Kennedy, the 35th president of the United States. Most people called him Jack or JFK. He popped onto the coin in 1964, a year after the admired leader was assassinated. His image faces left, with liberty curved around his head and the minting year along the lower collar. The mint mark appears directly above the mintage year, and the designer's initials, GR, are hidden under JFK's neckline. In God We Trust is stamped on the sides of his neck with In God on the left and We Trust on the right. The obverse was designed by Gilroy Roberts in 1964. He was the chief mint engraver from 1948 to 1964, so it was sort of his parting gift. The reverse tail side of the 1972 half dollar bears the official seal of the United States president. The seal is an eagle with 13 arrows in one claw, an olive branch in the other, and a shield covering its chest. It's circled by 50 stars with 13 more dotting the inner part of the seal, which has light rays and a banner or ribbon that says E Pluribus Unum near its head. The seal also has 13 puffs of cloud. This reverse was designed by Frank Gasparro, the chief mint engraver from 1965 to 1981. His initials, FG, appear above the tail on the right. United States of America is written along the upper collar while the denomination 50 cents runs along the lower collar. The coin has two dots that help separate the two legends. Special sets of the Kennedy have dollar were made in pure silver or pure gold, 0.9999, while some collector's editions were minted in 90% silver. But the 1972 half dollar was a regular edition with a core of 91.67% copper and a top coat of 8.33 nickel. So let's analyze its value. Over 150M half dollars were released from the Philadelphia Mint in 1972, but like the other JFK half dollars, most were hoarded and later melted, so not many exist in graded condition. This makes them tough to evaluate. Most 1972P, no mint mark, coins are only worth their face value of 50 cents, Though in MS-67, you can get as much as $10,000 for one of these coins. In 1972, close to 150 M half dollars came out of Denver, slightly less than the volumes from the Philadelphia Mint. Most of these coins are only worth their 50 cent face value. But some copies don't have FG on the reverse, and those can sometimes earn a premium. In 2016, a no FG 1972D half dollar sold for $7,485.13. In February 2020, an MS64 Plus sold for $17,500. Welcome to your channel, Coins of Rosie. I think every one of you wants to have a valuable collection of coins, but he lacks the basic information of the currency. In this channel, we are looking for the most important information for valuable coins. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you are not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell feature in order to. You will receive all new from our channel to start the video. 1949 Nickel Value Premium 1949 Nickel value is found in two specific varieties for the year. Date and mint combinations are important to collectors and combined with condition, 1949 nickels need a close inspection. A step-by-step -step method first identifies variety. Next, Using images in step two, you judge condition and identify the nickels in demand by collectors. The value chart highlights the premium coins. Availability of branch mint varieties of 1949 nickels is beginning to show on the chart with premiums. Abundant supplies are noticeability short of high condition examples. Because vintage Jefferson nickels are affordable to beginning and new collectors, these coins are popular in lightly circulated condition. With small premiums over face value, Lightly circulated nickels are a great beginning. 1949 varieties in eye-pleasing condition are somewhat of a challenge for collectors to find. Step 2. The section on grading condition highlights the qualities to recognize a collectible nickel. Infrequent varieties of 1949. Jefferson nickel. To recognize of the three varieties of Jefferson nickels struck in 1949, two are beginning to show a premium in lightly circulated condition. Mints producing U.S. coins are Philadelphia, Denver, and the San Francisco Mint. Each of the two branch mints placed mint marks on coins to indicate their production. San Francisco supplied the fewest for the year, a coin worth recognizing. 1,949 S. Jefferson Nickel S. Mint Mark on Reverse. San Francisco. Mint struck the coin. The need for minor coinage in the West 
required the San Francisco Mint to strike only 9,716,000 nickels in 1949. As time passed, this amount became the eighth lowest of the Jefferson series. A noted and significant point to collectors is low mintages, often indicating a premium coin. To identify the San Francisco production, a small S mint mark is located on the reverse when looking to the right of Monticello, 1,949 D Jefferson Nickel, D mint mark on reverse, Denver. Mint, struck the coin, 1,949 D Jefferson Nickel, Denver Mint contributed to nickel mintages with over 36 million struck in 1949, an adequate amount with ample supplies of circulated, worn coins available today. Very high condition coins are less frequently found and sought by collectors. Denver coins are confirmed by the D mint mark. On the reverse to the right of Monticello, a small D indicates the Denver produced coin. 1949, Jefferson nickel, no mint mark on reverse, Philadelphia mint, struck the coin. Philadelphia Mint struck a third variety nickel in 1949. Collections are based on completing both a date run and including all mints for the years. In lightly circulated condition, a premium has developed for the Philadelphia issue. Over 60 million were minted. However, over time, the variety is now a challenge to find in pleasing condition. The main mint, Philadelphia, did not place a mint mark on its coinage at the time. On the revere between the rim and the right of Monticello, the small space is empty. No mint mark confirms the Philadelphia mint struck the coin. Without any signs of wear to the surface, a coin is considered mint state condition. Jefferson nickels are typically collected in mint state grades and is the condition with premium values. Removal of mint luster, the shine, is one of the first considerations in determining this high level of preservation. Jefferson's portrait is high in relief across many areas. Focus on his forehead and where the hairline begins. Circulation wear quickly removes the fine texture of luster in these areas. Bright luster remains on the mint state example. A consistent color and texture extend across the hair, helping confirm no wear has reduced the surface quality. 1955, wheat penny value guides, rare errors D, S, and no mint mark. Three mints produced the collectible and highly recognizable 1955 Lincoln scent, like many similar minted from 1909 to 1958. All those are famous for President Lincoln's profile on the obverse and two wheat stalks on the reverse. The 1955 wheat penny value depends on the condition and mint mark. As expected, experienced collectors want to buy a famous and rare double die era struck this year. At the same time, beginners start with a basic collection that always includes three specimens from the regular strike. The obverse of the 1955 Lincoln wheat penny. The 1955 Lincoln Wheat Penny contains Abraham Lincoln's image facing right in the central position on the obverse. The simple design includes the word Liberty near the left coin rim and the inscription In God We Trust above the 16th U.S. President's head. In front of his bust are the date and appropriate mint mark, depending on the mint producing the particular coin. Those from Philadelphia always come without the mint mark. Finally, you can notice VDB letters on the bust's shoulder truncation, representing the designer's initials. The reverse of the 1955 Lincoln Wheat Penny. Like other Lincoln Wheat Pennies, those minted in 1955 come with a subtle design that includes two wheat ears stretching along the rim. They surround the denomination written in sizable fonts, while the inscription United States of America was divided into two lines. The tiny Latin motto, E Pluribus Unum, is placed along the top edge, a composition that includes 95% copper with the remaining percentage of tin or zinc is typical for all Lincoln pennies produced from 1944 to 1982, including those minted in 1955. Interestingly, proof coins produced this year come in various prices, and only hardly visible details distinguish pennies worth $6 or $1,500. It is on you to pick out the one with desired toning and contrast. Hello to all fans of collecting valuable coins. Thank you for supporting the channel because we are here only for you and in order to bring more information to you. If you are not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel now and activate the bell feature in order to receive all coins of Rosie videos. Thank you for starting the video.
1975 Roosevelt dime worth money? The 1975 dime is a fascinating piece of American currency that has captured the attention of collectors for decades. Howbeit, do they have any significant value? Continue reading this piece to know about the varieties, errors, and grading of the 1975 dime. 1975 Roosevelt Dime Values and Varieties Guide Produced at the Philadelphia Mint, the 1975 P. Roosevelt dime belongs to a scarce category referred to as the No Mint Mark dime, owing to the absence of any mint mark. In a rare mishap, the Philadelphia Mint overlooked the inclusion of the P. Mint Mark on a limited number of Roosevelt dimes in 1975. The 1975 No Mint Mark Roosevelt dime is a 10-cent coin, which is the standard denomination for dimes in the United States. The obverse features a portrait of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, who was instrumental in the founding of the March of Dimes, an organization dedicated to fighting polio to avoid plagiarism. On the reverse, the coin features an image of a torch, an olive branch, and an oak branch. This design was created by John R. Sinek, who was also responsible for designing the Franklin Half Dollar. Overall, the 1975 No Mint Mark Roosevelt dime is an interesting and valuable variety that is highly prized by coin collectors. Its rarity and unique history make it a fascinating addition to any coin collection. 1975 D. Roosevelt dime. The 1975 D. Roosevelt dime is a dime coin that was minted by the United States Mint in Denver in 1975. It is a regular issue coin that was produced as part of the Roosevelt dime series which began in 1946 to commemorate the life and achievements of President Franklin D. Roosevelt. While the 1975 D. Roosevelt dime is a common coin and not particularly rare, it is still of interest to coin collectors for several reasons. For one, it was produced during a time of transition for the U.S. Mint, as it was in the process of switching from using silver to copper nickel clad for its coinage. The Roosevelt dime was one of the first coins to be produced using the new clad composition, which was introduced in 1965. The 1975 D. Roosevelt dime is an interesting and collectible coin that is part of the larger Roosevelt dime series. While it may not be particularly rare or valuable, it is still an important piece of U.S. coinage history and a worthwhile addition to any coin collection. 1975 S. Roosevelt dime the 1,975 S dime had the lowest mintage of the three varieties, but was more than enough, with over 2 million total mintage to meet the demand of collectors. Like every other proof coin, this coin wasn't business struck, that is, not made to be released on circulation, but primarily for collectors. So this coin may not be as popular as the other varieties in coin markets. Proof coins are usually struck with more detailing and kept in rugged plastic cases to maintain their luster and brightness. However, this coin is considerably easy to get, especially in low grades, but grades from PR69 deep cameo condition may be hard to find. Its value is between $0.40 cents and $1.15, but could be worth more in an open market. Due to its rarity and unique nature, the 1975 dime-filled die error has a significant value among collectors. In fact, in 2016, one of these coins sold at auction for over $20,000. This high value is due to the scarcity of the coin and its unique appearance. 1937. Wheat Penny Value. R.D. S. No Mint Mark Worth Money. For the average American, the Lincoln Penny might seem boring. It's been around for over a hundred years. But did you know that the design of the coin in 1937 is very different from what you see in pocket change today? The Lincoln Penny back then was referred to as the Wheat Penny because of its simple design using sheaves of wheat on the tails of the coin. If you happen to have one of these 1937 Wheat Pennies, you might be surprised at its value today. Let's talk about how much these pennies are worth depending on their color and condition. The 1937 Wheat Penny has the same design as the 1909 issue of the Penny, the very first of the series. It honors former President Abraham Lincoln on the front and has a simple wheat design on the tail side. First, let's talk about the obverse. On this side of the coin sits a regal-looking Abe Lincoln looking to the right. The words, In God We Trust, are written right above his head on the upper rim of the coin. To Lincoln's left is the word Liberty. On the right side, near his chest, is the year 1937. The numeral 7 on the date wasn't given a long-tail typeface. 
it would only be granted later in 1947. Like the obverse, the reverse doesn't have too many elements. You'll see one cent on the center of the coin, with United States of America engraved underneath in a smaller font. The upper rim of the reverse shows the Latin creed e pluribus unum, two wheat stalks line the sides of the coin. The 1937 wheat pennies were made of 90% copper, which gave them that bright red tone upon production. But copper is known to oxidize when exposed to elements like oxygen and vapor. So many pennies end up looking brown and spotty after being in circulation. Wheat pennies that are brown or red-brown in shade are a lot less valuable than those that are graded MS red. This designation is given when the penny has retained 95% of its original red-orange hue, giving it that signature copper shimmer. MS red coins are only found in uncirculated mint conditions. Over 300 million no-mint mark wheat pennies were struck in Philadelphia in 1937. When they were first distributed to the public, many collectors had the foresight to save rolls of them. So there are plenty of these 1937 P wheat pennies in mint state today, many of them in MS red color. There are tons of MS red 1937 P wheat pennies in existence today. Most of them are between the grades of MS-65 and MS-67. These can be sold anywhere between $1.20 to $1.115. In a near-perfect condition of MS-68, you might be able to auction off your penny for $8,400. Like the Philadelphia issue, collectors were quick to save fresh rolls of the Denver pennies of 1937. As a result, there are plenty of fully red gems in collections today specifically those in the MS-65 to MS-67 range. These coins can be valued at $1.20 to $1.165. A fully red MS-68 wheat penny minted in Denver is arguably the most valuable across the entire 1937 issue. At a pristine mint state of MS-68, this coin can be auctioned off at up to $10,500.1937. San Francisco wheat pennies were well made, so collectors were smart to save lots of rolls of them after mintage. Today, it's common in fully red color, most especially in grade MS-66. The value of a coin like this is around $1.65 in the modern age. MS-67 plus MS red 1937S pennies are quite scarce today. But if you do manage to get your hands on one, you can expect to sell it for about $1,125. It is possible that everyone is looking for valuable coins, but most do not know the value of the coin that he owns from the state of time or the extent of its importance from the existing errors that may be in the year or be in nature. Worth $510,000 to start zero penny value? How to accurately judge 1910 penny value? A semi-key issue is part of the 1910 production of Lincoln pennies. San Francisco Mintage of Sense produced a coin that has become scarce today. It is necessary to correctly identify your 1910 wheat cent. Correctly judging, date vertical bar, mint mark, vertical bar condition is the process to finding how much your 1910 penny is worth. Popularity of the series and demand for these coins shows itself in the range of values each coin can have. Close inspection is needed to accurately value an old wheat penny. Listing on the chart are separated by mint mark and condition. Judging the grade of the coin is as important as date and mint. First, determine the mint that struck the coin. Secondly, be sure to review the grading section just below to complete the value process. Collectors pay close attention to both the date and importantly the mint that struck 1910 cents. Values differ depending on the rarity. San Francisco mint pieces are uncommon and are known as a semi-key and valued with a high premium. Because of these high premiums, recognition of exact variation is needed. 1910 is a needed date by collectors working on sets of early year Lincoln cents. On a rarity scale, circulated examples are abundant in worn circulated condition. What sets a coin apart in value is nice eye appeal in any grade. A sharpness to the look of the coin adds to its appeal and a quick jump in value in extremely fine condition. 1,910 S penny is a mini treasure, not often found and considered a scarce semi-key. Grading plays an important role to value. Although worth a nice premium in any grade, if Lincoln is sharp in detail with distinct waves to his hair and beard, it is a valued find. 
Overall operations at U.S. Mints were scaled back in 1910, thus flowing over to production numbers of San Francisco minted pennies. With the beginning of a small mintage, these coins, as represented in the value chart, are scarce today. Depending on condition, the grade of your 1910 penny values cover a large span. View the images of coins in different grades and compare your coin to each. A close match when comparing the amount of detail and wear gives a good indication of condition. Review the uncirculated example image first. It gives a good illustration of the complete amount of original detail on a coin without any wear to the surface. An uncirculated coin has no wear to its surface. Copper coins tone a variety of shades of brown over time, but is not an indication of circulation wear. When judging grade, looking through the toning to the actual surface of the coin is necessary. With all original design details still intact, view Lincoln's chin. It is covered with a beard clearly showing details. Many subtle high and lower areas are visible. Toning, as is often the case with copper, is laying lightly over the surface. However, no actual smoothing to the metal is evident. Wear would show at Lincoln's chin very quickly if a coin entered circulation. Light wear displays evenly on the surface of a Lincoln scent in extremely fine grade. Judging closely the chin area, small amounts of wear show as scattered, flattened spots. Importantly, none of these flat spots connect. A clear separation is found between the chin and the lower jawline. A raised profile to the chin remains. This coin is valuable for the year 1910 due to the time it went through and from the World Wars. And now its value for the year 2022 is much more than $500,000 for a single coin that is in good condition. Thank you for watching a video. 1932 Penny Value Completing 1932 Penny Value goes through two major steps. First, identify the mint that struck the coin. Wheat pennies are collected by date and mint mark combinations. Value charts list these varieties separately and in a range of grades of condition. Second major step, judging condition, a key factor in deciding on an accurate value. Small differences used to judge grade are highlighted to compare your coin. A 1932 wheat cent is still considered part of the early years of the series. These are closely inspected, determining condition. Moving through a value process of recognizing date, mint mark, condition, finds the correct place on the value chart. Identify the mint that struck the coin by comparing to images found below. Match the condition of your coin to the images, finding a close match. Descriptions highlight points to inspect narrowing the value range, identify 1932 penny variety. 1932 is significant as the second lowest year of cent production combined from all mints. As listed within the U.S. Mint Report, 19,562,000 bronze cents were produced. San Francisco Mint struck no cents, occupied with coining the new Washington quarters and refining gold and silver wheat cents struck at Philadelphia are quietly on a rarity scale as infrequent. Mintage numbers are the lowest of any wheat cent year from the facility. However, 9,062,000 coin does not stand out as within the 10 lowest mintages, a somewhat overlooked situation. Without attention as a scarce issue, many 1932 cents stayed in circulation receiving heavy wear. A notable rise in value is found with coins showing only light wear. If there is a clear separation of Lincoln's cheek from jaw, a closer judgment of condition is needed. See grading images below point 1932 D Lincoln Penny Denver Mint divided its time refining gold and silver, striking the new Washington quarters and striking 10 500 zero zero cents. Interest with collectors is sparked by the fact it is the first time Denver struck more cents than Philadelphia. Lightly worn or better condition 1932 cents are sought by collectors. Strong value is found when the coin displays a lack of distracting marks, collectible grades define 1932 penny value. Collectors inspect each coin, judging condition. Grade, a notation of condition, is determined and used as part of the description of the coin. Collectors and dealers now combine date, mint mark, and grade as they value an individual coin. Grading any coin involves subtle points as to its condition. Buyers, collectors see a coin have their point of view. Sellers, dealers view a coin from a different perspective. 
An overall conservative approach when judging condition finds a solid grade and happy medium uncirculated condition, a coin with no wear to the surface is graded as uncirculated. These coins are at the top of the collectible and value scale. Look closely at the hair just above and behind the ear of Lincoln. A small tuft of hair curls over and just covers the very top of the ear. A mint state uncirculated coin displays the curl with a rounded profile. Anywhere shows as a flattening and smoothing effect. A subtle deeper toning lays on the high points of the 1932 penny imaged. It is the first stages of toning and does not indicate wear. A close examination confirms no smoothing to the surface. To collectors such toning is an added appeal giving a contrast to design elements. 1932 Penny Value Completing 1932 Penny Value goes through two major steps. First, identify the mint that struck the coin. Wheat pennies are collected by date and mint mark combinations. Value charts list these varieties separately and in a range of grades of condition. Second major step, judging condition, a key factor in deciding on an accurate value. Small differences used to judge grade are highlighted to compare your coin. A 1932 wheat cent is still considered part of the early years of the series. These are closely inspected, determining condition. Moving through a value process of recognizing date, mint mark, condition, finds the correct place on the value chart. Identify the mint that struck the coin by comparing to images found below. Match the condition of your coin to the images, finding a close match. Descriptions highlight points to inspect narrowing the value range, identify 1932 penny variety. 1932 is significant as the second lowest year of cent production combined from all mints. As listed within the U.S. Mint Report, 19,562,000 bronze cents were produced. San Francisco Mint struck no cents, occupied with coining the new Washington quarters and refining gold and silver wheat cents struck at Philadelphia are quietly on a rarity scale as infrequent. Mintage numbers are the lowest of any wheat cent year from the facility. However, 9,062,000 coin does not stand out as within the 10 lowest mintages, a somewhat overlooked situation. Without attention as a scarce issue, many 1932 cents stayed in circulation receiving heavy wear. A notable rise in value is found with coins showing only light wear. If there is a clear separation of Lincoln's cheek from jaw a closer judgment of condition is needed. See grading images below point 1932 D Lincoln Penny Denver Mint divided its time refining gold and silver, striking the new Washington quarters, and striking 10 500 zero zero cents. Interest with collectors is sparked by the fact it is the first time Denver struck more cents than Philadelphia. Lightly worn or better condition 1932 cents are sought by collectors. Strong value is found when the coin displays a lack of distracting marks, collectible grades define 1932 penny value. Collectors inspect each coin, judging condition. Grade, a notation of condition, is determined and used as part of the description of the coin. Collectors and dealers now combine date, mint mark, and grade as they value an individual coin. Grading any coin involves subtle points as to its condition. Buyers, collectors see a coin have their point of view. Sellers, dealers view a coin from a different perspective. An overall conservative approach when judging condition finds a solid grade and happy medium uncirculated condition, a coin with no wear to the surface is graded as uncirculated. These coins are at the top of the collectible and value scale. Look closely at the hair just above and behind the ear of Lincoln. A small tuft of hair curls over and just covers the very top of the ear. A mint state uncirculated coin displays the curl with a rounded profile. Anywhere shows as a flattening and smoothing effect. A subtle deeper toning lays on the high points of the 1932 penny imaged. It is the first stages of toning and does not indicate wear. A close examination confirms no smoothing to the surface. To collectors such toning is an added appeal giving a contrast to design elements. To collect coins, you must be aware of all the details of the currency 
and have the most information to apply for selling it at a very high price that exceeds $10,000.1972 half dollar value guides. The half dollar is a 50 cent coin that has gone through numerous changes throughout its lifetime. It first appeared in 1794 and its current version features JFK, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, and the 1972 half dollar is a JFK as well. Let's look into the background of this often neglected denomination so we can reliably validate the true 1972 half dollar value. The obverse head side of the 1972 half dollar features a profile portrait of John F. Kennedy, the 35th president of the United States. Most people called him Jack or JFK. He popped onto the coin in 1964, a year after the admired leader was assassinated. His image faces left with liberty curved around his head and the minting year along the lower collar. The mint mark appears directly above the mintage year, and the designer's initials, GR, are hidden under JFK's neckline. In God We Trust is stamped on the sides of his neck with In God on the left and We Trust on the right. The obverse was designed by Gilroy Roberts in 1964. He was the chief mint engraver from 1948 to 1964, so it was sort of his parting gift. The reverse tail side of the 1972 half dollar bears the official seal of the United States president. The seal is an eagle with 13 arrows in one claw, an olive branch in the other, and a shield covering its chest. It's circled by 50 stars with 13 more dotting the inner part of the seal, which has light rays and a banner or ribbon that says E Pluribus Unum near its head. The seal also has 13 puffs of cloud. This reverse was designed by Frank Gasparro, the chief mint engraver from 1965 to 1981. His initials, FG, appear above the tail on the right. United States of America is written along the upper collar while the denomination 50 cents runs along the lower collar. The coin has two dots that help separate the two legends. Special sets of the Kennedy have dollar were made in pure silver or pure gold, 0.9999, while some collector's editions were minted in 90% silver. But the 1972 half dollar was a regular edition with a core of 91.67% copper and a top coat of 8.33 nickel. So let's analyze its value. Over 150M half dollars were released from the Philadelphia Mint in 1972, but like the other JFK half dollars, most were hoarded and later melted, so not many exist in graded condition. This makes them tough to evaluate. Most 1972p, no mint mark, coins are only worth their face value of 50 cents, though in MS67 you can get as much as $10,000 for one of these coins. In 1972, close to 150M half dollars came out of Denver slightly less than the volumes from the Philadelphia Mint. Most of these coins are only worth their 50 cent face value. But some copies don't have FG on the reverse, and those can sometimes earn a premium. In 2016, a no FG 1972D half dollar sold for $7,485.13. In February 2020, an MS64 Plus sold for $17,500. Welcome to your channel, Coins of Rosie. I think every one of you wants to have a valuable collection of coins, but he lacks the basic information of the currency. In this channel, we are looking for the most important information for valuable coins. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you are not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell feature in order to. You will receive all new from our channel to start the video. 1949, Nickel Value Premium, 1949. Nickel value is found in two specific varieties for the year. Date and mint combinations are important to collectors and combined with condition, 1949 nickels need a close inspection. A step-by-step -step method first identifies variety. Next, using images in step two, you judge condition and identify the nickels in demand by collectors. The value chart highlights the premium coins. Availability of branch mint varieties of 1949 nickels is beginning to show on the chart with premiums. Abundant supplies are noticeability short of high condition examples. Because vintage Jefferson nickels are affordable to beginning and new collectors, these coins are popular in lightly circulated condition. With small premiums over face value, lightly circulated nickels are a great beginning. 1949 varieties in eye-pleasing condition are somewhat of a challenge for collectors to find. Step 2. The section on grading condition highlights the qualities to recognize a collectible nickel. Infrequent varieties of 1949, 
Jefferson Nickel. To recognize of the three varieties of Jefferson Nickels struck in 1949, two are beginning to show a premium in lightly circulated condition. Mints producing U.S. coins are Philadelphia, Denver, and the San Francisco Mint. Each of the two branch mints placed mint marks on coins to indicate their production. San Francisco supplied the fewest for the year, a coin worth recognizing. 1,949 S. Jefferson Nickel S. Mint Mark on Reverse. San Francisco. Mint struck the coin. The need for minor coinage in the West required the San Francisco Mint to strike only 9,716,000 nickels in 1949. As time passed, this amount became the eighth lowest of the Jefferson series. A noted and significant point to collectors is low mintages, often indicating a premium coin. To identify the San Francisco production, a small S mint mark is located on the reverse when looking to the right of Monticello. 1949D Jefferson Nickel, D mint mark on reverse, Denver. Mint, struck the coin, 1949D Jefferson Nickel. Denver Mint contributed to nickel mintages with over 36 million struck in 1949. An adequate amount, with ample supplies of circulated, worn coins available today. Very high condition coins are less frequently found and sought by collectors. Denver coins are confirmed by the D mint mark. On the reverse to the right of Monticello, a small D indicates the Denver produced coin. 1949, Jefferson Nickel, no mint mark on reverse, Philadelphia Mint, struck the coin. Philadelphia Mint struck a third variety nickel in 1949. Collections are based on completing both a date run and including all mints for the years. In lightly circulated condition, a premium has developed for the Philadelphia issue. Over 60 million were minted. However, over time, the variety is now a challenge to find in pleasing condition. The main mint, Philadelphia, did not place a mint mark on its coinage at the time. On the revere between the rim and the right of Monticello, the small space is empty. No mint mark confirms the Philadelphia mint struck the coin. Without any signs of wear to the surface, a coin is considered mint state condition. Jefferson nickels are typically collected in mint state grades and is the condition with premium values. Removal of mint luster, the shine, is one of the first considerations in determining this high level of preservation. Jefferson's portrait is high in relief across many areas. Focus on his forehead and where the hairline begins. Circulation wear quickly removes the fine texture of luster in these areas. Bright luster remains on the mint state example. A consistent color and texture extend across the hair, helping confirm no wear has reduced the surface quality. 1955. Wheat Penny Value Guides. Rare Errors D, S, and No Mint Mark. Three mints produced the collectible and highly recognizable 1955 Lincoln Scent, like many similar minted from 1909 to 1958. All those are famous for President Lincoln's profile on the obverse and two wheat stalks on the reverse. The 1955 wheat penny value depends on the condition and mint mark. As expected, experienced collectors want to buy a famous and rare double die era struck this year. At the same time, beginners start with a basic collection that always includes three specimens from the regular strike. The obverse of the 1955 Lincoln wheat penny. The 1955 Lincoln Wheat Penny contains Abraham Lincoln's image facing right in the central position on the obverse. The simple design includes the word Liberty near the left coin rim and the inscription In God We Trust above the 16th U.S. President's head. In front of his bust are the date and appropriate mint mark, depending on the mint producing the particular coin. Those from Philadelphia always come without the mint mark. Finally, you can notice VDB letters on the bust's shoulder truncation, representing the designer's initials. The reverse of the 1955 Lincoln Wheat Penny. Like other Lincoln Wheat Pennies, those minted in 1955 come with a subtle design that includes two wheat ears stretching along the rim. They surround the denomination written in sizable fonts, while the inscription United States of America was divided into two lines. The tiny Latin motto, E Pluribus Unum, is placed along the top edge, a composition that includes 95% copper with the remaining percentage of tin or zinc is typical for all Lincoln pennies produced from 1944 to 1982, including those minted in 1955. Interestingly, 
proof coins produced this year come in various prices, and only hardly visible details distinguish pennies worth $1.06 or $1,500. It is on you to pick out the one with desired toning and contrast. Hello to all fans of collecting valuable coins. Thank you for supporting the channel, because we are here only for you and in order to bring more information to you. If you are not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel now and activate the bell feature in order to receive all coins of Rosie videos. Thank you for starting the video. 1975 Roosevelt dime worth money. The 1975 dime is a fascinating piece of American currency that has captured the attention of collectors for decades. How be it, do they have any significant value? Continue reading this piece to know about the varieties, errors, and grading of the 1975 dime. 1975 Roosevelt Dime Values and Varieties Guide Produced at the Philadelphia Mint, the 1975 P. Roosevelt dime belongs to a scarce category referred to as the No Mint Mark dime, owing to the absence of any mint mark. In a rare mishap, the Philadelphia Mint overlooked the inclusion of the P mint mark on a limited number of Roosevelt dimes in 1975. The 1975 no mint mark Roosevelt dime is a 10 cent coin, which is the standard denomination for dimes in the United States. The obverse features a portrait of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, who was instrumental in the founding of the March of Dimes, an organization dedicated to fighting polio to avoid plagiarism. On the reverse, the coin features an image of a torch, an olive branch, and an oak branch. This design was created by John R. Sinek, who was also responsible for designing the Franklin Half Dollar. Overall, the 1975 No Mint Mark Roosevelt dime is an interesting and valuable variety that is highly prized by coin collectors. Its rarity and unique history make it a fascinating addition to any coin collection. 1975 D. Roosevelt dime the 1975 D. Roosevelt dime is a dime coin that was minted by the United States Mint in Denver in 1975. It is a regular issue coin that was produced as part of the Roosevelt dime series, which began in 1946 to commemorate the life and achievements of President Franklin D. Roosevelt. While the 1975 D. Roosevelt dime is a common coin and not particularly rare, it is still of interest to coin collectors for several reasons. For one, it was produced during a time of transition for the U.S. Mint, as it was in the process of switching from using silver to copper nickel clad for its coinage. The Roosevelt dime was one of the first coins to be produced using the new clad composition, which was introduced in 1965. The 1975 D. Roosevelt dime is an interesting and collectible coin that is part of the larger Roosevelt dime series. While it may not be particularly rare or valuable, it is still an important piece of U.S. coinage history and a worthwhile addition to any coin collection. 1975 S. Roosevelt Dime The 1,975 S. Dime had the lowest mintage of the three varieties but was more than enough, with over 2 million total mintage to meet the demand of collectors. Like every other proof coin, this coin wasn't business struck, that is, not made to be released on circulation but primarily for collectors. So this coin may not be as popular as the other varieties in coin markets. Proof coins are usually struck with more detailing and kept in rugged plastic cases to maintain their luster and brightness. However, this coin is considerably easy to get, especially in low grades, but grades from PR69 deep cameo condition may be hard to find. Its value is between 40 cents and $1.15, but could be worth more in an open market. Due to its rarity and unique nature, the 1975 dime-filled die error has a significant value among collectors. In fact, in 2016, one of these coins sold at auction for over $20,000. This high value is due to the scarcity of the coin and its unique appearance. 1937. Wheat penny value. R.D. S. No mint mark worth money. For the average American, the Lincoln penny might seem boring. It's been around for over a hundred years, but did you know that the design of the coin in 1937 is very different from what you see in pocket change today? The Lincoln penny back then was referred to as the wheat penny because of its simple design using sheaves of wheat on the tails of the coin. If you happen to have one of these 1937 wheat pennies, you might be surprised at its value today. Let's talk about how much these pennies are worth depending on their color and condition. 
The 1937 Wheat Penny has the same design as the 1909 issue of the Penny, the very first of the series. It honors former President Abraham Lincoln on the front and has a simple wheat design on the tail side. First, let's talk about the obverse. On this side of the coin sits a regal-looking Abe Lincoln looking to the right. The words, In God We Trust, are written right above his head on the upper rim of the coin. To Lincoln's left is the word liberty. On the right side, near his chest, is the year 1937. The numeral 7 on the date wasn't given a long tail typeface. It would only be granted later in 1947. Like the obverse, the reverse doesn't have too many elements. You'll see one cent on the center of the coin, with United States of America engraved underneath in a smaller font. The upper rim of the reverse shows the Latin creed e pluribus unum, two wheat stalks line the sides of the coin. The 1937 wheat pennies were made of 90% copper, which gave them that bright red tone upon production. But copper is known to oxidize when exposed to elements like oxygen and vapor. So many pennies end up looking brown and spotty after being in circulation. Wheat pennies that are brown or red-brown in shade are a lot less valuable than those that are graded MS red. This designation is given when the penny has retained 95% of its original red-orange hue, giving it that signature copper shimmer. MS red coins are only found in uncirculated mint conditions. Over 300 million no-mint mark wheat pennies were struck in Philadelphia in 1937. When they were first distributed to the public, many collectors had the foresight to save rolls of them. So there are plenty of these 1937 P wheat pennies in mint state today, many of them in MS red color. There are tons of MS red 1937 P wheat pennies in existence today. Most of them are between the grades of MS 65 and MS 67. These can be sold anywhere between $1.20 to $1.115. In a near-perfect condition of MS-68, you might be able to auction off your penny for $8,400. Like the Philadelphia issue, collectors were quick to save fresh rolls of the Denver pennies of 1937. As a result, there are plenty of fully red gems in collections today, specifically those in the MS-65 to MS-67 range. These coins can be valued at $1.20 to $1.165. A fully red MS-68 wheat penny minted in Denver is arguably the most valuable across the entire 1937 issue. At a pristine mint state of MS-68, this coin can be auctioned off at up to $10,500.1937. San Francisco wheat pennies were well made, so collectors were smart to save lots of rolls of them after mintage. Today, it's common in fully red color, most especially in grade MS-66. The value of a coin like this is around $1.65 in the modern age. MS-67 plus MS red 1937S pennies are quite scarce today. But if you do manage to get your hands on one, you can expect to sell it for about $1,125. It is possible that everyone is looking for valuable coins but most do not know the value of the coin that he owns from the state of time or the extent of its importance from the existing errors that may be in the year or be in nature. Worth $510,000 to start zero penny value? How to accurately judge 1910 penny value? A semi-key issue is part of the 1910 production of Lincoln pennies. San Francisco Mintage of Cents produced a coin that has become scarce today. It is necessary to correctly identify your 1910 wheat cent. Correctly judging, date vertical bar, mint mark, vertical bar condition is the process to finding how much your 1910 penny is worth. Popularity of the series and demand for these coins shows itself in the range of values each coin can have. Close inspection is needed to accurately value an old wheat penny. Listing on the chart are separated by mint mark and condition. Judging the grade of the coin is as important as date and mint. First, determine the mint that struck the coin. Secondly, be sure to review the grading section just below to complete the value process. Collectors pay close attention to both the date and, importantly, the mint that struck 1910 cents. Values differ depending on the rarity. San Francisco mint pieces are uncommon and are known as a semi-key and valued with a high premium. Because of these high premiums, recognition of exact variation is needed. 1910 is a needed date by collectors working on sets of early-year Lincoln cents.
On a rarity scale, circulated examples are abundant in worn, circulated condition. What sets a coin apart in value is nice eye appeal in any grade. A sharpness to the look of the coin adds to its appeal, and a quick jump in value in extremely fine condition. 1,910 is penny is a mini treasure, not often found and considered a scarce semi-key. Grading plays an important role to value. Although worth a nice premium in any grade, if Lincoln is sharp in detail with distinct waves to his hair and beard, it is a valued find. Overall operations at U.S. Mints were scaled back in 1910, thus flowing over to production numbers of San Francisco minted pennies. With the beginning of a small mintage, these coins, as represented in the value chart, are scarce today. Depending on condition, the grade of your 1910 penny values cover a large span. View the images of coins in different grades and compare your coin to each. A close match when comparing the amount of detail and wear gives a good indication of condition. Review the uncirculated example image first. It gives a good illustration of the complete amount of original detail on a coin without any wear to the surface. An uncirculated coin has no wear to its surface. Copper coins tone a variety of shades of brown over time, but is not an indication of circulation wear. When judging grade, looking through the toning to the actual surface of the coin is necessary. With all original design details still intact, view Lincoln's chin. It is covered with a beard clearly showing details. Many subtle high and lower areas are visible. Toning, as is often the case with copper, is laying lightly over the surface. However, no actual smoothing to the metal is evident. Wear would show at Lincoln's chin very quickly if a coin entered circulation. Light wear displays evenly on the surface of a Lincoln scent in extremely fine grade. Judging closely the chin area, small amounts of wear show as scattered, flattened spots. Importantly, none of these flat spots connect. A clear separation is found between the chin and the lower jawline. A raised profile to the chin remains. This coin is valuable for the year 1910 due to the time it went through and from the World Wars. And now its value for the year 2022 is much more than $500,000 for a single coin that is in good condition. Thank you for watching a video. 1932 Penny Value Completing 1932 Penny Value goes through two major steps. First, identify the mint that struck the coin. Wheat pennies are collected by date and mint mark combinations. Value charts list these varieties separately and in a range of grades of condition. Second major step, judging condition, a key factor in deciding on an accurate value. Small differences used to judge grade are highlighted to compare your coin. A 1932 wheat cent is still considered part of the early years of the series. These are closely inspected, determining condition. Moving through a value process of recognizing date, mint mark, condition, finds the correct place on the value chart. Identify the mint that struck the coin by comparing to images found below. Match the condition of your coin to the images, finding a close match. Descriptions highlight points to inspect narrowing the value range, identify 1932 penny variety. 1932 is significant as the second lowest year of cent production combined from all mints. As listed within the U.S. Mint Report, 19,562,000 bronze cents were produced. San Francisco Mint struck no cents, occupied with coining the new Washington quarters and refining gold and silver wheat cents struck at Philadelphia are quietly on a rarity scale as infrequent. Mintage numbers are the lowest of any wheat cent year from the facility. However, 9,062,000 coin does not stand out as within the 10 lowest mintages, a somewhat overlooked situation. Without attention as a scarce issue, many 1932 cents stayed in circulation receiving heavy wear. A notable rise in value is found with coins showing only light wear. If there is a clear separation of Lincoln's cheek from jaw, a closer judgment of condition is needed. See grading images below point 1932D Lincoln Penny Denver Mint divided its time refining gold and silver, striking the new Washington quarters, and striking 10 500 zero zero cents. Interest with collectors is sparked by the fact it is the first time Denver struck more cents than Philadelphia. Lightly worn or better condition 1932 cents are sought by collectors. Strong value is found when the coin displays a lack of distracting marks, collectible grades define 1932 penny value.
Collectors inspect each coin, judging condition. Grade, a notation of condition, is determined and used as part of the description of the coin. Collectors and dealers now combine date, mint mark, and grade as they value an individual coin. Grading any coin involves subtle points as to its condition. Buyers, collectors see a coin have their point of view. Sellers, dealers view a coin from a different perspective. An overall conservative approach when judging condition finds a solid grade and happy medium uncirculated condition, a coin with no wear to the surface is graded as uncirculated. For $21,600 is an example of what you should be looking for on your coin, and I'll show you exactly why it sold for that amount of money at the end of the video. But first, let's talk about this 1909 cent coin that brought $1.99. Now, when you're looking at the coin, you can see there's a lot of damage on the coin, and that's why the label here by PCGS says Environmental Damage UNK Details, and this is also a DO, which stands for Double Die Obverse. So to break this coin down really quick, 1909 was the first year the United States started producing the wheat cent penny coin. There are four different types of this coin. You have the 1909 and the 1909 VDB, which is what you have here. Then you have the 1909S and then the 1909S VDB. The 1909S VDB is typically the most rare and sought after coin out of all of those. However, any 1909 coin, especially in good condition, will bring a good amount of money because this coin is a DDO or double die obverse coin, which you can see ever so slightly in the dates in Liberty. This coin was able to sell for $99 even though it was environmentally damaged. So before the wheat penny, the United States had what we call a Flying Eagle Ascent coin. This one is from 1857. It's a genuine coin. However, this coin was previously in much worse condition, but then someone whizzed the coin. That's why you see NGC designated this as a AU Details whizzed coin. So whizzing occurs when someone gets a high-powered tool and increases the luster and shine of the coin. These companies like NGC and PCGs can quite easily distinguish a coin that has been altered like this. Overall, it will decrease the value. So don't clean or whiz your coins because this one sold for 288 bucks. This 1915 one cent coin sold for 420 bucks. This one was created by NGC at a details. This is a proof coin. However, there is some serious damage on this coin and the coin was actually bent at one point in time. So a coin that has a lot of damage on it, whether it's a bend or the coin was whizzed or there's severe environmental damage on the coin. These grading companies simply won't grade the coin. They will give it a genuine grade or an authentic grade, put it in the holder, and they will say details like this example. If this coin was in better condition and it was not bent, it would have sold for a lot more money than $420. Here's another coin that came before the wheat cent penny. This is an Indian cent coin. Now this one is also a proof coin to tell. If you have a proof coin, you want to look at the backdrop or the field of the coin. It's going to look very lustrous, almost like a mirror. You'll be able to see your reflection. This person who had this coin at some point in time altered the color of the coin to make it look more appealing. However, NGC spotted this and called it altered color, and this coin was able to sell for $516. Here's that coin I was talking about earlier. This is a 1909 SVDB coin. You can see the S mint mark below the date, and then on the back bottom center of the coin, you will see the initials of VDB, which stand for Victor David Brenner. This coin was created by PCCGS as genuine in the grade range of XF, which stands for extremely fine. So this coin is out there in circulation in pocket change before someone saw it, pulled it from circulation, put it in their collection, and was able to sell it for $900. Here's that coin we've been waiting for. This coin sold for $21,600, and here's why this is a 1944D. That D mint mark stands for the Denver Mint, where this coin is produced one cent wheat penny graded by NGC at an AU detail. So this coin has been cleaned. Unfortunately, the majority of the time, you're not going to want to clean your coin unless it is done by a professional company like NGC. They have a professional restoration company called NCS, which professionally restores the coin's condition. The reason why it's so rare and valuable is because it was struck on a transitional zinc-coated steel planche. Once again, this coin has been cleaned. However, because it got the negative comment of cleaned, it is going to bring less money than it would have otherwise. 
This coin sold for $21,600. If you want to know how much your coin is worth, join the Coin Value Club down below today and we'll see you inside. 1958 Jefferson Nickel. Chances are good you may have a Jefferson Nickel in your pocket right now. These five cent pieces have been an important part of U.S. coinage for decades. The U.S. Mint began producing the Jefferson Nickel in 1938 when it replaced the Buffalo Nickel. While most people would likely think that a nickel is not collectible, some Jefferson Nickels can be quite valuable depending on year, type, and condition. For a serious coin collector to jump through the necessary hoops to obtain a Jefferson Nickel, the coin will likely have to be in almost perfect condition. These coins are more beautiful than distressed coins and can be far more valuable. Grading the 1958 Jefferson Nickel. When looking at coins that have been around for decades, you have to take a close look at the coin's condition. While some of these coins may be valuable even if in poor condition, collectors typically only desire coins that are in pristine condition. Finding coins that have stood the test of time and look great can be quite difficult, however. When you are looking at a coin's condition, what you are really in effect doing is trying to decide how that coin might be graded. You can see the guideline calculated. Collectors most often try to get their hands on coins in this condition. These coins have never been circulated or used for exchange, and because of this, their mint state condition may have been well preserved over the years. Looking at the coin's physical appearance, you will likely assume that the coin was freshly minted and has not been around for decades. Extremely fine. Coins assigned this grade will have some very minor flaws. Nevertheless, they may still be sought after by collectors. With this grade, any flaws on the coin are very insignificant and may only be noted it would fall into this category. These coins have seen heavy use over many years. They may have significant scratches, dents, or even discoloration. For a coin collector, these coins are considered the bottom of the barrel and will often be passed on in favor of coins in better condition. Pricing the 1958 Jefferson Nickel. When trying to determine an accurate price range for a coin, there are two key considerations. The first is the coin type. For example, in 1958, there were two types of Jefferson Nickel minted. In addition to the coin type, you must also get an accurate assessment on the coin's physical condition. Use the chart below to get an idea of what you might expect to shell out for a 1958 Jefferson Nickel based on the coin type and condition. Hello everyone, it's fantastic to be back with another Roseworth Dimes episode. The reverse side of these coins, which are 1977 Philadelphia examples with heavily braided dollar zero. Ten pieces shows the weekly strike date, making them nowhere near eligible for full bands categorization. Please use the subscribe and build buttons located below this video to join our channel if you haven't already. The 1977 Roseworth Time is a typical coin with a large mintage, just like the majority of Roseworth Times. Since the United States Mint produced over 796 million dimes in 1977, they are comparatively common and simple to locate. The 1977 Roosevelt Dime is regarded as the scarcest coin in terms of availability. It doesn't have any distinctive qualities that are particularly rare or that will have a big impact on its either worth or collectability. Specific variations or minting mistakes, however, might occasionally raise the value's popularity among collectors. 1977 Roosevelt Dime circulation is often worse than their face worth of zero dollars. 10. Coins that are in uncirculated condition and still have their original brilliance may be worth a little more to collectors. However, the value is still somewhat low unless it is in outstanding condition or shows a unique variant or defect. Two specimens with no finer make up the service's 67 FB population. At the Great Collections Auction in April 2023, one of the most priceless specimens of the problem was negotiated. These well-toned specimens in at least 67% condition with full bands sell for $14,106 with buyer's premium. I appreciate you guys watching. Keep watching our videos on YouTube and don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons. In this video, I'll discuss 1975 Philadelphia Mint Jefferson Nichols and reveal the values of these coins. Thus, in excellent immaculate condition. As can be seen, Sheldon Ski has this Jefferson Nichols encircled in exceptional shape. Since there is no mint mock beneath the date, Philadelphia Mint produced it. 
The Denver branch of certain beef has impressed those with D mint mark. Surfaces of cold nickel gray are mildly abraded, although they still retain some nickel gray mint shine in certain places. Make sure to click the subscribe and build buttons located below the reverse side display sharp strike, but not sharp enough to acquire full steps classification if you haven't already done so. If the graded one cello steps are completely flat on a few steps lower, I appeal is generally good. Therefore, the 1975 Jefferson Nichols is not regarded as valuable or scarred. In actuality, it is a very typical coin that has been produced in vast quantities since the 1975. The Jefferson Nichols coin does not have any scars, and its worth is mostly determined by how well it has been used in circulation, where it exhibits indicators that its value has typically been around or around its five-cent face value. The 1975 might, however, have a marginally higher worth to collectors if you find it in commerce and it is still in excellent condition. The 1975 nickels only have some value in higher mean states with full river steps. Take this scent as an illustration by PCGs greater than the typical state 67 plus. One of the finest full steps 1975 nickels known to PCGs, it is exquisitely toned in pastel iridescent hues. The surfaces have been expertly kept and have been entirely struck. At Stax Powers, sold in 2021 for $45,160. Discover the hidden treasures within the world of coin collecting, where history and value converge. Today, we embark on a journey to uncover the secrets of the 1950 nickel. Its scarcity and unique mint varieties make it a true gem for collectors of all ages located anywhere in the world. Whether you're a seasoned veteran or just beginning your numismatic adventure, this fascinating piece of history holds something for everyone. By understanding the importance of variety and condition, you can unlock the true worth of your very own 1950 nickel. So join us in exploring the world of vintage nickels and immerse yourself in the captivating realm of coin collecting. Your 1950 nickel is an elusive find. It is a favorite year with collectors and an exciting addition to their collections. With a built-in allure because of the date, the next and important step is recognizing the quality of your coin. Values rise on a scale along with the state of preservation. Subtle points are judged and grade is determined in step two. Compare your coin to the grading images to narrow its range on the value chart. Popular variety of 1950, Jefferson Nickel. To recognize 1950, is one of the very interesting dates in the entire Jefferson Nickel series. It has intrigued collectors for decades. Soon after release of the 1950s Nickels, it was realized by collectors as a low production year for coinage. Hey everyone, you're watching another Coins of Rosie episode featuring US coin. Today we have a 1996 P. Washington quarter from Kona's collection circulated Philadelphia mint issue, which is denoted by the mint mark P near the date. This example is in an extremely fine condition with no magnifying glass required to see the enhanced details on central reliefs and abraded surfaces that are mostly reflective with bits of luster and selected areas. The reverse side exhibits sharply struck device motifs as well, so just pay attention to the features of the chest of the eagle eye appeal is nice. Overall, according to Jaime Hernandez from PCGS, this 1996 peak quarter had an extremely high mintage of over 900 million coins struck, and it is very common in grades of MS-65 and under. In MS-66, it is still easily obtainable with thousands of examples in existence in this grade. In MS-67, there are a bit challenging to locate, but it's still possible to find without much. We have a circulated 1996 P. Washington quarter from the Philadelphia Mint today, which is identified by the mint mark P, close to the date in Kona's collection. This illustration is in exceptionally good shape. The improved details on the core reliefs can be seen without a magnifying glass. Please be sure to click the bell buttons below to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Additionally, abraded surfaces are primarily reflective with some shine in specific places. Sharply struck device motifs can be seen on the reverse side as well. Simply paying attention to the eagle's chest features is appealing. Overall, the 1996 peak quarter had a very high mintage of more than 900 million pieces minted, according to Jamie Hernandez from PCGS. It is extremely typical in grades MS-65 and below. It is still simple to gain in MS-66 thanks to the abundance of instances and existence in this grade.
Despite being somewhat difficult to find, Mississippi. 67 items can still be easily located because hundreds of items have been graded in this condition. Less than 100 examples of MS-68 scars are known, and none are finer. MS-68 specimens are valued at about $225. According to the PCGS price guide, the most expensive specimen will sell for even more in the Great Collections auction in January 2023. At the Great Collections auction, this MS-6 State Super Diamond ultimately brought in $590.62 with buyer's premium. Don't spend any of the coins shown in this video since you could wind up making a costly mistake. We've all seen those Wisconsin coins before. They're from 2004, and I used to collect them as a kid, but I had no idea how precious they could be. I mean, this coin alone is worth $6,000. Let me quickly lower your expectations before I tell you what to look for. Most Wisconsin coins are not worth $6,000, but the individual who discovered this coin was able to find it, have it graded, and sell it for $6,000. So, what are your thoughts need to look for? So, pay attention to this corn stem in the back. The PCGs graded this coin as Mint State 67. That is three points short of the perfect grade of 70, which is an accomplishment in and of itself. So, there are three varieties of this coin, You'll either have an extra low leaf, an extra high leaf, or no leaf at all. You should look for an exceptionally low leaf because it is more valuable. Another location to keep an eye on is the front below. In God We Trust has a small, minuscule D-Mint stamp. The D-Mint mark represents the Denver Mint, where this was produced. A coin was made. Coins can be made in Denver, San Francisco, Philadelphia, or West Point. Most Philadelphia coins do not have a mint mark, but the other factories have. If you have an extra low leaf coin from 2004, it's a Wisconsin quarter that also grades quite well by PC. Because this coin sold for $6,000, a 67 could have an extremely expensive coin. Did you know this little Roosevelt penny sold for $21,150? This is because of this. So it's a proof coin. Proof coins are not usually worth much money, but if you have one like this, it will be. So this was evaluated by Proof 68 from PCGS. Even though there is a lot of coloring on this coin, it is called toning, and it is a naturally occurring process that occurs when a coin oxidizes, depending on how it is stored. We're getting a lot of queries about this coin right now, so let me try to clear the air. Essentially, most people will have a coin with the year 1968 and no mint mark below the date. That signifies you have a coin struck in Philadelphia. If you have a proof coin, I'll demonstrate the difference right here. Proof coins have only the background or field of the coin and no S mint stamp. That this coin is of the no S kind. It's essentially an inaccuracy that few people are aware of, but that's all there is to it. People will watch our videos and say, hey, I'll just get a 1968 Roosevelt dime that is Philadelphia issued with no min mark and polish it to look like a San Francisco minted coin with no estimate mark. Almost all of these proof coins have an estimate mark, but this one does not, which is why it's sold for $21,150. Speaking of mint marks, this one went for $19,800 owing to the fact that the mint mark was repunched on this going, but very swiftly. This has resulted PCGs has given Aments a 66, a good grade classification. This one has a repunched mint mark on it. So if you look closely on the back right side of the coin, you'll notice a D mint mark. You can notice that this has the repunched mint mark if you zoom in with a magnifying glass or a USB microscope. Because of this and the high grade of a PC, only Mint State 66 permitted it to sell for $19,800. If you learned something from this video, please like it and we'll see you in the next one. We will show you four extremely uncommon Jefferson Nickels in this short video that you shouldn't buy. They are valuable if you can locate one. Press the subscribe button down there and let's begin. Four. This 1958 D Jefferson Nickel is rated Mint State 64 by NGC and is struck on a silver dime planche. The reverse simply shows light sea green and chestnut patna, whereas the obverse is richly toned and varied in apple green and golden brown shades. At 1230, E Pluribus Unum was off the stage and the strike was in line with the schedule. The date is present in the lowest three quarters of it. It went for number three, $1,265. It's 1977 S evidence. Roosevelt dime overstruck on a Jefferson nickel. 
amazing double denomination error that NGC classified as PR68 Ultra Cameo. The rarity of double denomination errors increases when proof colors are used. The condition of the current component is even more important. Dot in accordance with the NPR 68 Ultra Cameo Heritage Auctions. This 1977 S-proof nickel struck on a dime exhibits amazing depth of mirroring in the fields along with dazzling, starkly contrasting designs. The dime's reeded edge is completely intact all the way around the border, and the strike is almost precisely centered on the coin. Legends are readable even though they partially run off the flan. The fields, including those of the reverse, display components of the dime design. Stories. Based only on technical grounds, my appeal is compelling. All the more fascinating is the double denomination error's stunning character. For $9,300, it was sold. This second example is a 1941 Jefferson Nickel in PR68 condition. The finest non-cameo piece at the PCGS census is tied with 10 other pieces, while PCGs does not list a single cameo sample of the 1941 proof Jefferson Nickel. The interior's lovely pastel tones on each side a shade of lavender blue with touches of gold, yellow, and mint green around the edges. The only place on Monticello where strike weakness is visible is on the bottom step. It's almost perfect preservation. This 1940 Jefferson nickel with the reverse of the one that sold for $9,600 number 1, 1937. PCGs graded at PR68. The colors of ice blue, pink, magenta, and apricot accentuate this well-hit and apparently infallible PR68 specimen. Nothing on either side, not even hairlines, stains, or other distractions, comes out even under close inspection with a loop. Amazingly creative work. The reverse of 1938 with wavy stairs on Monticello is currently around 50 times rarer than the reverse of 1940, according to Ron Guth and Bill Gale in their 2002 edition of United States Proof Sets and Mint Sets. Diversity. The final price for this unusual diamond was $26,400. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of 1979 Susan B. Anthony dollars. Now, most of these coins won't leave you rolling in dough, but hey, I've got a special treat for you. Hold on to your hats as I reveal some jaw-dropping examples that fetched a pretty penny. Take a gander at this 1979 D1 Susan B. Anthony coin created by none other than NGC and minted at Denver Mint. Now, where your coin comes from can sway its value, but the grade is a game changer. We're talking perfection here, people. A grade of 70 is the ultimate prize. And this baby? It's just two points shy of that flawless grade sitting pretty at 68. Okay, in this video, we'll discuss some 1979 Susan B. Anthony coins that sold for a lot of money. Although the majority of these coins won't be very valuable, I'll show you a few examples that sold for a lot of money in this video. Here is a dollar one. Susan B. Anthony coin from 1979D that was struck by NGC in Mint State 68. The Denver Mint, where this currency was produced, is indicated by the D-Min mark on the left side of the coin. The mintage of a coin will determine its value depending on where it is produced, but a more important consideration. And guess what? This unicorn of a coin sold for a whopping $1,527 that's one shiny piece of history. So whether you're a seasoned collector or new to the game, these coins have stories to tell. Stay tuned because we're about to unravel the mysteries of numismatic wonders. The letter grade is R. The maximum grade we can receive is a 70. This coin's 68 grade puts it just two points short of the ideal grade of 70. Therefore, S. Susan B. Anthony coin for $1,527 up the next week in 1979. This one was given an MS-68 grade by PC Jess. Once more, two points behind, but this time it was a San Francisco mint coin. That S-men mark denotes just that. Also keep in mind that when combined with other elements like the date, the mint mark, and the quality, selling your coin does matter. For a Susan B. Anthony coin, this one went for $3,000.818, which is a significant sum of money. This one is fairly simple. If, if you ever come across a Susan B. Anthony coin that resembles this, you might be able to purchase something. This 1979 S. Susan B. Anthony dollar coin, which sold for $7,475, was inadvertently minted on a cent plant sheet larger by PCGS, say, 64. The coin in question is a 1979 P dollar one, Susan B. Anthony coin. This one currently has the P mint mark. Coins don't typically have a P mint mark. 
simply said, there won't be a mark. And by extension, it follows that the coin was intended to be this one with the PCG's grade. I intended to say 67 plus. Although the plus designation might not appear important, it actually raises the worth of all things, everything together. By clicking the subscribe button, you can allow this coin to sell for $6,462. Let us really have it out with you two. Return with them. I'm grateful for more. In the following video, I'll see you. 1958 Jefferson Nickel. Chances are good you may have a Jefferson Nickel in your pocket right now. These five cent pieces have been an important part of US coinage for decades. The US Mint began producing the Jefferson Nickel in 1938 when it replaced the Buffalo Nickel. While most people would likely think that a nickel is not collectible, some Jefferson nickels can be quite valuable depending on year, type, and condition. For a serious coin collector to jump through the necessary hoops to obtain a Jefferson nickel, the coin will likely have to be in almost perfect condition. These coins are more beautiful than distressed coins and can be far more valuable. Grading the 1958 Jefferson nickel, when looking at coins that have been around for decades, you have to take a close look at the coin's condition. While some of these coins may be valuable even if in poor condition, collectors typically only desire coins that are in pristine condition. Finding coins that have stood the test of time and look great can be quite difficult, however. When you are looking at a coin's condition, what you are really in effect doing is trying to decide how that coin might be graded. You can see the guidelines below to get a good estimate of what a Jefferson nickel might be worth based on its condition and grade. Uncirculated. Collectors most often try to get their hands on coins in this condition. These coins have never been circulated or used for exchange, and because of this, their mint state condition may have been well preserved over the years. Looking at the coin's physical appearance, you will likely assume that the coin was freshly minted and has not been around for decades. Extremely fine. Coins assigned this grade will have some very minor flaws. Nevertheless, they may still be sought after by collectors. With this grade, any flaws on the coin are very insignificant and may only be noticed during a very close inspection. Fine. Coins that are assigned this grade have been used in exchange over the years and will have some visible signs of age and wear. That being said, any damage to the coin does not affect the integrity of the coin's images or details. Good. The majority of Jefferson nickels on the market today would fall into this category. These coins have seen heavy use over many years. They may have significant scratches, dents, or even discoloration. For a coin collector, these coins are considered the bottom of the barrel and will often be passed on in favor of coins in better condition. Pricing, the 1958 Jefferson nickel. When trying to determine an accurate price range for a coin, there are two key considerations. The first is the coin type. For example, in 1958, there were two types of Jefferson nickel minted. In addition to the coin type, you must also get an accurate assessment on the coin's physical condition. Use the chart below to get an idea of what you might expect to shell out for a 1958 Jefferson nickel based on the coin type and condition. Hello everyone, it's fantastic to be back with another Roseworth Dimes episode. The reverse side of these coins, which are 1977 Philadelphia examples with heavily braided dollar zero. Ten pieces shows the weekly strike date, making them nowhere near eligible for full bands categorization. Please use the subscribe and build buttons located below this video to join our channel if you haven't already. The 1977 Roseworth Time is a typical coin with a large mintage, just like the majority of Roseworth Times since the United States Mint produced over 796 million dimes in 1977, they are comparatively common and simple to locate. The 1977 Roosevelt dime is regarded as the scarcest coin in terms of availability. It doesn't have any distinctive qualities that are particularly rare or that will have a big impact on its either worth or collectability. Specific variations or minting mistakes, however, might occasionally raise the value's popularity among collectors. 1977 Roosevelt dime circulation is often worse than their face worth of zero dollars. 10. Coins that are in uncirculated condition and still have their original brilliance may be worth a little more to collectors. However, the value is still somewhat low unless it is in outstanding condition or shows a unique variant or defect. Two specimens with no finer make up the service's 67 FB population. 
at the Great Collections Auction in April 2023, one of the most priceless specimens of the problem was negotiated. These well-toned specimens in at least 67% condition with full bands sell for $14,106 with buyer's premium. I appreciate you guys watching. Keep watching our videos on YouTube and don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons. In this video, I'll discuss 1975 Philadelphia Mint Jefferson Nichols and reveal the values of these coins. Thus, in excellent immaculate condition. As can be seen, Sheldon Ski has this Jefferson Nichols encircled in exceptional shape. Since there is no mint mark beneath the date, Philadelphia Mint produced it. The Denver branch of certain beef has impressed those with D mint mark. Surfaces of cold nickel gray are mildly abraded, although they still retain some nickel gray mint shine in certain places. Make sure to click the subscribe and build buttons located below the reverse side display sharp strike but not sharp enough to acquire full steps classification if you haven't already done so. If the graded one cello steps are completely flat on a few steps lower, I appeal is generally good. Therefore, the 1975 Jefferson Nichols is not regarded as valuable or scarred. In actuality, it is a very typical coin that has been produced in vast quantities since the 1975. The Jefferson Nichols coin does not have any scars and its worth is mostly determined by how well it has been used in circulation, where it exhibits indicators that its value has typically been around or around its five cent face value. The 1975 might, however, have a marginally higher worth to collectors if you find it in commerce and it is still in excellent condition. The 1975 nickels only have some value in higher mean states with full river steps. Take this scent as an illustration by PCGs greater than the typical state 67 plus. One of the finest full steps 1975 nickels known to PCGs, it is exquisitely toned in pastel iridescent hues. The surfaces have been expertly kept and have been entirely struck. At Stax Powers, sold in 2021 for $45,160. Discover the hidden treasures within the world of coin collecting, where history and value converge. Today, we embark on a journey to uncover the secrets of the 1950 nickel. Its scarcity and unique mint varieties make it a true gem for collectors of all ages located anywhere in the world. Whether you're a seasoned veteran or just beginning your numismatic adventure, this fascinating piece of history holds something for everyone. By understanding the importance of variety and condition, you can unlock the true worth of your very own 1950 nickel. So join us in exploring the world of vintage nickels and immerse yourself in the captivating realm of coin collecting. Your 1950 nickel is an elusive find. It is a favorite year with collectors and an exciting addition to their collections. With a built-in allure because of the date, the next and important step is recognizing the quality of your coin. Values rise on a scale along with the state of preservation. Subtle points are judged and grade is determined in step two. Compare your coin to the grading images to narrow its range on the value chart. Popular variety of 1950, Jefferson Nickel. To recognize 1950 is one of the very interesting dates in the entire Jefferson Nickel series. It has intrigued collectors for decades. Soon after release of the 1950s nickels, it was realized by collectors as a low production year for coinage. San Francisco did not strike any nickels alerting collectors to watch numbers struck from Philadelphia and Denver. As it turned out, both mints struck below average numbers for the year. Correctly identify your 1950 nickel variety. Both are needed. Complete a set of vintage nickels. 1950D Jefferson nickel D mint mark on reverse. Denver mint struck the coin. A 1950 Denver nickel has the distinction of the lowest mintage of the entire Jefferson nickel series. 2,630,030 nickels released to circulation is a very low number of coins and collectors highly prized the variety. These are also one of the few dates and mints of the series with a premium value in circulated condition. Denver placed a D mint mark on coinage to identify the mint. The small letter is on the reverse to the right of Monticello next to the rim. An important variety to identify, Philadelphia, the main mint normally struck tens to hundreds of millions of nickels per year. 1950 is an exception with numbers minted just over 9.8 million, turning out as the eighth lowest 
of the Jefferson Nickel series. Low numbers of coins struck is an indication to collectors of a potential scarce variety. Today, premiums have developed for examples in lightly circulated condition. In the 1950s, Philadelphia did not use a mint mark to identify its coinage. Look on the reverse of the coin. The absence of a mark in the area to the right of Monticello confirms the Philadelphia mint variety. 1950 nickels are a premium value coin in grades from mint state through the lower circulated grade of good. Grading qualifies the amount of wear when compared to standards. The different grades are listed on value charts to narrow how much the coin is worth. The Kennedy half dollar was first produced in 1964 to commemorate the assassinated president, John F. Kennedy. In 2001, production for general circulation came to an end, with just a few coins produced each year for collectors. 1970s Kennedy half dollar PCGs, PR66 struck on a 25C planche, $7,475. One look at this coin shows you it's decidedly odd. Kennedy's head is squashed right up against the top rim, and at the bottom, the date barely fits onto the coin. This unusual appearance is the result of a rare error at the San Francisco Mint that produced the coin. Instead of a planche, a metal disc, for a half dollar, one for a quarter was used instead. That's even more surprising as this is a proof coin, one supposed to be of superior quality and produced for collectors. Proofs should be inspected before leaving the mint. This one, though, was evidently overlooked. Because errors like this are so infrequent, the resulting coins are very collectible. This 1970 Kennedy half dollar sold for $7,475 when it came to auction in January 2007. 1965, Kennedy half dollar PCGs, MS67 plus $9,000. This coin from 1965 is one of the highest quality examples of a Kennedy half dollar minted that year. It's graded MS67 by the PCGS, the Professional Coin Grading Service. The MS stands for Mint State, meaning a coin that has never been circulated. The number relates to the quality and condition of the individual coin. The higher the number, the better the quality, with 70 being the highest. A coin rated MS67 Plus will have a full, clear strike with good luster. It may have up to four small marks or one larger one and those marks will be away from the design so they don't detract from the beauty of the coin. This example also had unusual coloration, with rainbow iridescence along one edge on both sides. The MS67 Plus rating was the highest ever awarded by the PCGS to a 1965 Kennedy half dollar. Only three coins have achieved that credit, making this a very desirable specimen for collectors. This one sold at auction in August 2021 with a winning bid of $9,000. 1964, Kennedy Half Dollar PCGs, PR70 Type 2, reverse $9,400. The Type 2 Kennedy Dollar is one that's silver clad. It dates from 1964 and it's a proof coin. And it achieved the highest possible grading of PR70 from the PCGs. But because the coin was produced to mark Kennedy's assassination, its historical importance was clear from the outset. Collectors snapped up proofs and kept them in perfect condition expecting their value to appreciate over time. As a result, 1964 proof coins aren't as rare as some others. And although this example is the highest possible grading of 70, a total of 29 coins share that honor. So while this is a beautiful and interesting coin, it isn't scarce enough to command a huge price. Even so, it fetched a none too shabby $9,400 when it came under the auctioneer's hammer in December 2013. 1,971S Kennedy Half Dollar PCGs, PR69 Ultra Cameo, $12,000. This 1971 Half Dollar minted in San Francisco is another proof coin. It's graded PR69 by the PCGs, meaning it's near perfect quality. And it was also given the prestigious designation of Ultra Cameo. Ultra Cameos, often also described as Deep Cameos, are used to highlight particularly high qualities of proof coin. The term is used for coins that have heavier levels of frosting, a matte or sandblasted appearance on the higher parts of the design. Those frosted areas contrast with reflective fields to create a pleasing visual effect. And ultra cameos have more of this frosting than cameos. That means this particular example is a very high quality proof. But again, there are more than a handful of them in existence. While no finer examples are known about, there are 82 coins graded PR69 ultra cameo. So while this is a valuable coin, it isn't one of a kind. Nevertheless, it made a creditable $12,000 when it was sold at auction in June 2019. 
1964 Kennedy Half Dollar NGC MS 68 $12,500. The highest prices for coins have traditionally been achieved by specialist auctioneers. Names like Stacks and Bowers and Heritage Auctions dominate auction records. But that's changing. And today, some record prices have been set on online-only auction sites. That was the case for this 1964 Kennedy Half Dollar, graded an impressive MS-68 by the PCGs. It was offered for sale on eBay in May 2019. The winning bidder paid a final price of $12,500. And unlike traditional auction houses, there was no buyer's premium to add to the total. 1839 Half Dollar Proof Like the 1838 version, the 1839 Half Dollar Proof is super valuable. Both were struck in the New Orleans Mint, and both are considered some of the most valuable half dollars you can collect. The 1839 half dollar proof is actually even rarer than the 1839 version, since there are only four known examples. One sold for $299,000 in 2012. 1801 half dollar. In 1801 and 1802, the US Mint changed its design for the back of the coin, featuring a heraldic eagle on the back of the half dollar. Like all mint transitions, this resulted in some different combinations of dyes. Add in that this coin is over 200 years old, and an example in mint condition can be worth a fortune. One sold in 2023 for $420,000. 1795 Flowing Hair Half Dollar Like the 1794 version, the 1795 Flowing Hair Half Dollar is very, very rare. Even less common in pristine condition, examples with crisp details can sell for a premium. One of these coins, featuring Lady Liberty in profile with flowing hair, sold for $552,000 in 2021. 1838 Half Dollar Proof A proof coin is one that never entered circulation, so they are often in incredible condition. The thing is, they're nearly impossible to find in some years. The 1838 Half Dollar is one of those. In fact, experts believe this Half Dollar is the first proof coin made, and there were probably fewer than 20 struck. Add almost two centuries of time passing and you get one of the rarest half dollars out there. One sold in 2014 for $763,750. 1797 half dollar. The 1797 half dollar is another incredibly rare example. Fewer than 4,000 were ever minted and we're talking about a coin from over two centuries ago. These are not easy to find, especially in good condition. Collectors estimate there may be 324 still around. One sold for $1,560,000 in 2023, 1794 Flowing Hair Half Dollar. Tied for the most valuable title, the 1794 Flowing Hair Half Dollar also sold in 2023 for $1,800,000. This coin is just as rare, even though it's impossible to find in perfect condition. Although the U.S. Mint struck about $2,000 dollars in 1794, 10% of them didn't meet standards and were immediately melted down. This coin started out as rare because of that. Add to that the unpopularity of the flowing hair design, which was redone soon after. 1796, stars half dollar. What is the most valuable half dollar? You probably won't be surprised to learn that it's an old one. Early in the history of the US Mint, the half dollar featured a profile portrait of Lady Liberty. Although there were a lot of half dollars minted in 1795, there were far fewer made in 1796 and 1797. The 16 star version is even rarer and it's virtually impossible to find in nearly pristine condition. This is a coin that's over 200 years old after all. One sold at auction in 2023 for $1,800,000. Welcome to a new video. Before we start the video, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell to receive everything new about our channel. It is possible that every person who has valuable currencies wants to know what their value is, what their price is, and how he can sell them. If you are interested in the matter and you have currencies and want to know all of these details, watch the video until the end. You know that valuable coins. Each coin has a specific value, and given what the collector of valuable coins urges about the features available in the coins that give you their value. Today, I will tell you three places where you can sell your coins. But the first thing you must know the value of the coin in order to sell it. So the value of the coin is concentrated. There are three things. The first thing is that the currency has an error in the date, an error in the head, and every currency that has errors has a higher value. 
so you must know that a regular currency is only worth the price of the currency. The second thing is that the currency on the date on which the currency was issued must be a distinctive history, such as World War I, World War II, a coup in the country, and many other things. The third thing is that the currency must be original without touching it, or without washing it with carbon materials or sterile materials. It must be an original currency, as it is in order for it to have the origin of the date that was presented. There are only these, my friends, three things that you must do. Since you are fond of collecting valuable coins, you must be aware of them. Now I will give you three places or websites for you to sell your coins after verifying three conditions. The first site is eBay. The eBay website is a global website that offers everything. You can sell it for a good price, but eBay is a slow selling site, so you should be as I told you. It has three features that can sell your valuable coins at a reasonable price and at a high price, as all YouTubers say. The second thing is the place where you can go and carry currencies with you to check their price, but you must search on the internet how much they cost, or on YouTube, or at the channels that give information about currencies, you have knowledge of the value which is the house of the valuable metal currency. In every region in the world, there is a house of currencies, the valuable metal that gives you the value of the coin, how much it is worth, and how much you can sell it. But I told you to be aware in advance of the price of the coins. Please research first and find out how much the coin is worth, and at this time you can go to sell it or ask for its price. As for the last site, which is the one I prefer, it is called the Sitecoins for Dashsale.com. You may not have heard of this site before, but this site has more than 10,000 registered people specializing in valuable coins who trade their currencies for buying and selling on this site. The advantage of this site is that you communicate with the people to whom you want to sell your coins, and you ask for the price you desire, and they compare the prices in the market. So I advise all of you to enter this site and explore its special advantages. Therefore, I advise you to enter this site here. We have finished the video. If you have reached here in the video, I invite you to subscribe and support the channel and activate the bell feature so that you receive all new updates from our channel. Thank you for the support to a new video. We'll talk about a 10 cent Roosevelt dime in this video, which you should never spend because the exact coin you're currently viewing on screen sold for $57,500. Is it really true? It was graded at a Mint State 64 NGCA third-party entity. Now, if you own a coin like this, kindly refrain from damaging it or making any changes to its state, as doing so will actually drastically lower the coin's worth. Your coin will be worth more money the better it is, condition-wise. So why did this coin fetch this kind of price at auction? You won't really be able to tell by looking at it though examining the coin's reverse. However, as soon as you turn the coin over, you'll see that this 10 cent Roosevelt dime is not quite right. That's because the cent obverse die was used to strike this coin. Obverse now simply refers to the coin's front, while reverse denotes its rear. You now need to exercise extreme caution because some people attempt to manipulate coins after watching videos like mine, splicing them together. Fortunately, you are aware of what to watch out for because you are watching this to ensure that someone you care about is never duped or taken advantage of on a coin like this. I suggest showing your friends or family this video since this particular was given a genuine grade of 64 on the NGC, indicating that it is real. If a business such as NGC grades a fake or counterfeit coin, they guarantee that you will receive your money back. For that reason, in my opinion, I enjoy working with outside grading services. Once more, this coin brought $57,500 at auction, but it received a 68, which is still very high. Please leave a comment if you have any Lincoln Presidency cent coin. How valuable and rare 1974 Lincoln cents can be. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, make sure to smash subscribe and bell buttons below this video. Now you may be wondering what makes these coins so special. Well, nothing to be honest. This is just a circulated specimen from Coiner's collection. Brown and slightly tarnished example from Philadelphia Mint Coin displays some circulation drop on the peaks of reliefs, but the fields are mostly free from mentionable contact marks. This pen is worth just little more than its face value. If we would consider copper melt value, 
the 1974 Lincoln cent was produced in large quantities, with over 4 billion coins minted that year. This high mintage number makes them readily available and keeps their value relatively low. In terms of high grades, such as main state's condition, the 1974 Lincoln cents do not command significant premiums. While some collectors may seek out examples in pristine condition for their collection, there is not a high demand for these coins in the emismatic market. Therefore, their value in the high grades remain relatively modest. However, starting from Miss 67 grades, they are starting fetching up pretty good sums. At auctions, they are very hard to find. M67 plus specimens are scarcer and have a guiding price of $850. Super rare grade is M68. PCGS reported just three specimens in that grade was non-finer guiding prices. $6,500 one of the most expensive specimens sold at auction is this Miss 68 red gem. The surfaces exhibit copper-orange coloration and sharp strike. Definition was not mentionable blemishes or contact marks. It ended up selling for $92,181.25 in 2020. Thanks for joining us today in exploring the intriguing world of 1974 Lincoln Cents. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more captivating coin stories. Happy collecting! These valuable pennies are worth up to $200,000, and they might be in your pocket. The odds are long, but they're still well worth searching for. So before you say keep the change, check to see if you have any of these valuable pennies. 1943, Bronze Lincoln. Only a handful of these bronze pennies have been discovered, including the one found by Lutz. The most valuable Lincoln cents sold privately in 2010 for $1.7 million, said Stone. In order to preserve copper for the war effort, the U.S. Mint switched to making pennies from zinc-coated steel planches instead of the usual bronze coin blanks, Stone explained. At least that's what was supposed to happen. As fate would have it, some of the old bronze planches got stuck in the big tote bins that the Mint used to feed the coin presses. At the end of 1942, he said, the few bronze coins that were struck went unnoticed and got released into circulation. Described as the most famous era coin in American numismatics, and the odds of finding one are astronomically against today. The 1943 bronze Lincoln cent is stone estimates that 15 to 20 are known to collectors today, although it's possible that there are a few that have not yet been accounted for. A nice circulated example like Lutz coin could sell for around $150,000 to $200,000. Heritage auctioned a similar one in slightly lower grade for $186,000 earlier this month. He said Mint suggests testing it with a magnet first. If it sticks, it's not copper. 1969. S Double Die Obverse double dies are created when the hub imprints an additional image onto a die or stamp, causing some misalignment. The doubling occurs from mistakes in the minting process. James Bucky a coin expert at the Spruce Crafts, explained to CNBC Make It. The doubling on the 1969 S double die of verse is especially prominent in the words liberty and in God we trust, he said. Collectors refer to the obverse of a coin as the front or head side, usually bearing a portrait. Also look for the letter S right below the year 1969, which means it was created at the San Francisco Mint. Double dies are created when the hub imprints an additional image onto a die or stamp, causing some misalignment. The doubling occurs from mistakes in the minting process. James Bucky, a coin expert, at 1992 Close AM. Reverse on the reverse of the 1992 Close AM, the right foot of the A and left foot of the M in America touch, said Stone. Most pennies minted that year have very definite spaces between those letters. This came about because in the 1990s and early 2000s, the Mint used different dies for producing coins for circulation and proof coins for collectors, explained Bucky. But due to a mix-up, a proof die was used for the reverse of the coin before it was supposed to be used starting in 1993, it's likely that an entire run of 250,000 pennies were printed this way, he said. That makes them much easier to find than the 1969 double die coins. Bucky estimates that a 1992 Close AM coin in fairly new condition could be worth about $20,000, while the 
while a used one could sell for around $2,000 to $3,000. One sold at a heritage sale in 2012 for more than $20,000, according to CoinWorld. Get ready to uncover the hidden treasure of the 1943 quarter value. At a minimum, it's a whopping $3.82. But hold on tight, because we're about to take this adventure to the next level. If your quarter is from the Denver or San Francisco Mint, and in uncirculated condition, we're talking about a value of $1.30 to $1.32. And guess what? The Denver Mint steals the show, being the most valuable of them all. Now, the San Francisco coins may be a little less rare, but don't count them out just yet. And hey, if you happen to stumble upon a Philadelphia Mint quarter without a mint mark, no worries. With over 100 million of those in circulation, they still hold their silver bullion value unless they're in uncirculated condition. So keep your eyes peeled because the treasure hunt for your 1943 quarter value is on condition is very important to collectors and dealers when price is considered. The impressive Washington quarter pictured is an example rising to the top of the value scale never circulated and nowhere a very desirable coin identifying mint marks and especially condition accurately combines to reveal how much your 1943 quarter is worth today. The coin value chart breaks the prices down by date, mint mark, and state of preservation. The 1943D is 1-4 minted by the Denver Mint in 1943, and values are given in four different grades. How to grade your coins is covered below 1943 quarter value by grade from brand new condition to very worn condition is reflected in the examples. Line your quarters in a row, judge their state of preservation, and assign each a grade as you proceed. Handle each coin carefully, keeping in mind 1943 quarter value is highest for uncirculated coins uncirculated, best described as never been touched, appearing as if fresh from the mint. The color of the coin is either bright silver, white, or naturally toned. Technically, the requirement is the total absence of wear. Look for the first evidence of abrasion from circulation, showing as a break of the delicate luster on the cheeks. Extremely fine. Slight wear confined only to the highest points of the design. The areas of focus to determine grade are the hair details towards the top of Washington's head, the curls above the ear, and the cheeks near the eye. Easily described as a crisp and collectible coin, fine wear has begun to take its toll on this quarter. Flattened areas of wear cover Washington's hair and curls, although the hairline along the forehead is visible. Good all the major details show, but very flattened by wear, the tops of the letters have begun to merge into the rim in this grade. 1943 quarter value is their silver content. Coins have always held a special fascination for collectors and enthusiasts alike. Among the vast array of coins, the 1918 penny stands out as a captivating piece of history. From its intrinsic value to the errors that can enhance its allure, the 1918 penny has a rich tapestry of stories to tell. In this comprehensive article, we delve into the intricacies of the 1918 penny, exploring its value, historical significance, and the errors that make it a prized possession for numismatists worldwide. The year 1918 marks a significant period in history, with the world engulfed in the flames of the First World War. Against this backdrop of turmoil and strife, the 1918 penny was minted, bearing witness to a tumultuous era. Produced in various mints across the United States, including Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco, these pennies serve as tangible artifacts of a bygone era. The 1918 penny holds both intrinsic and numismatic value. Composed of 95% copper and 5% tin and zinc, these pennies possess a metallic worth that fluctuates with market demand. Copper, a valuable commodity, lends an inherent value to these coins, particularly in times of economic uncertainty. Beyond its material composition, the 1918 penny carries historical significance, adding to its allure for collectors and enthusiasts. While the intrinsic value of the 1918 penny is undeniable, its numismatic worth transcends mere monetary value.